What if I told you there was a small coastal town on the west coast of Florida that could transport you thousands of miles away to a seaside village in Greece? Well, in Tarpon Springs, that's exactly where you will feel you are. Home to the highest percentage of Greek Americans than any other American city, there is so much to see and do here. From manatee sightings to learning the history of sponging, grabbing a drink at any one of the award-winning breweries or the distillery, or catching a talented musician in the sponge exchange market to a shrine known for numerous miracles and then finish the day with a gorgeous sunset. Tarpon Spring sits in Pinellas County in west central Florida on the Anclote River bayous between Lake Tarpon and the Gulf of Mexico, about 25 miles northwest of Tampa. One of Tarpon Springs' best kept secrets is the Safford House Museum. The Safford family was one of the city's original developers. The restored house is a great example of 19th century Florida architecture. Take a step back in time with period furnishings and original family possessions. Turning off US Alt 19 onto the Deccanese Boulevard takes you into the heart of the sponge dogs. It was here that America's sponging history was born and still lives. In the 1880s, John Cheney founded the first sponge business. But it was in 1905 that John Kokoris introduced the technique of sponge diving from his native Greece. The sponge industry soon became one of the leading maritime industries in Florida and the most important business in Tarpon Springs. At the western end of Dodecany sits the Naiads Fountain by Texas-based sculptor Glenna Goodacre. The Naiads in Greek and Roman mythology inhabit fresh water providing light to springs, rivers, lakes, and fountains. The fountain itself and the base are constructed from stone and ordered from the Greek island of Calumnus in the Dodecanese archipelago. Did you know a rusty belly is a nickname given to a large male gag grouper? They generally range between 20 and 60 pounds. Lining mostly the southern side of the street are many local shops with everything from hot sauce and spices to t-shirts and leather goods. There is also authentic Greek grocery stores with many items imported from Greece itself. Of course, you can also find sponges, for which Tarpon Springs is well known. Nowadays, sponge crews work from adapted fishing boats instead of the traditional ones. Did you know that sponges are animals, not undersea plants? Sponges are the most simple, multi-celled organism on Earth. Because some produce toxins, sponges have very few natural predators. Scientists have even found sponge fossils from about 1 billion years ago. Because of the distance to the sponge beds, sponge boats and their crews go out for weeks at a time. So, catching a crew that has recently come back in is a rare treat. As they unload their haul, they will lay them out on the docks to dry before taking them to auction. Sellers will buy the entire lot without being able to pick through them. This ensures crews sell everything they bring in. The crews are very friendly and allow you to come up to these piles and look around. Feel free to ask them questions and take pictures. At the center of the dock stands the Sponge Diver Memorial Statue. This serves as a reminder of the divers lost in Tarpon's history. So we are getting ready to get on to the St. Nicholas boat line. They are going to take us out uh, and explain a little bit more about sponge diving. And we're going to see a sponge diver wearing the traditional suit with the big diving helmet. Started in 1924 by Captain Michael J. Billeris, the St. Nicholas Boat Line is still in operation today. It is the second oldest attraction in the state of Florida, and it's still owned and operated by Captain Billeris' grandson, George. The city of Tarpon has a traditional sponge boat on display. If you look here, this was the boat's kitchen. A small stove was kept in this locker for cooking. Remember, they went out for weeks at a time, too. Also, this copper cage will be placed around the propeller to keep the airlines going down to divers from being caught up and cut. Sponges are master filters. They can filter an amount of water 100,000 times their size each day. That means a basketball-sized sponge can filter an entire residential pool in one day. A sponge diver's suit will weigh up to 190 pounds when he enters the water. This weight helps keep him at the bottom while he does his work. Because of this weight, divers have help getting them into and out of the suit itself. These helpers are usually divers themselves and part of the crew. They will take turns diving while out of sea. Inside the helmet, there is a small relief valve on the side. The diver tilts his head to push it in. This releases air from inside the helmet and the suit, allowing him to sink. 
believe it or not, even with all of the weight, if he didn't do this repeatedly, he would float back to the surface. It's actually how he comes back up when he's done. His helpers are tying a line to him before he goes in. This line is the only communication they will have with him as he's on the bottom. A series of tugs relays messages from him back to the boat. The rake he carries with him is how he gathers the sponges from the bottom. Notice the helper paying out the lifeline? Normally he would be in deeper water, but this shows how he walks along looking for sponges. See how he turns his body from side to side? This is the only way he can see more than what is directly in front of him. Because of the helmet being attached to the suit in the way that it is, he can't simply turn his head. He has to turn his whole upper body to see. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like and subscribe to see our future content. This black substance is actually the living part of the sponge. What you're used to seeing is the actual skeleton. These islands aren't natural to the river. As they dredged the river, they deposited the dirt and sand to the sides, making them. Today, they are covered with mangroves and are wildlife refuges. Across from the docks where the boats tie up is a sponge exchange. This is what would be called an agora in ancient Greece, or a marketplace or public square. Here you will find many retail shops, a few restaurants, tables where people will congregate and share a drink, or perhaps a hand-rolled cigar from one of the shops. On weekends, you can see violinist Cal Morris as he plays. Be sure to drop a small donation for him, or buy one of his CDs. A small fountain has a sculpture of Poseidon. A spongy smile on the side of the Sponge Diver Supply Shop is sure to brighten your day. Make sure you stop in Hellas for some authentic Greek food. They've been around since 1970 and are a favorite among locals and visitors alike. Long lines are not uncommon, but you can make reservations. After your meal, make sure you leave room for something sweet from Hella's Retail Bakery. They have everything in here. Their wholesale bakery caters to some of the largest Greek festivals in the United States, including the Epiphany Celebration here in Tarkin Springs. The Epiphany Celebration recognizes the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. Stop by one of the many Greek grocery stores to pick up your spices and other goods imported from Greece and other European countries. If you stop in the sponge factory, they have many sizes of sponges you can buy. Also a free movie about the history of sponge diving. The St. Michael Shrine was built more than 80 years ago to fulfill the promise of an ill 11 year old boy made to the Archangel Michael after the saint saved his life. Still today, people visit the shrine to pray and light candles. Several miracles are said to have taken place here as well. Did you know the scientific name for manatees is Greek for sirens? The mythical creature that led ships to wreck on their rocky coast? While they look similar to seals, the closest relative to a manatee is the elephant. They might look chubby, but most of their mass is stomach and intestines. The only danger manatees face are from us. Alligators don't even mess with them. And a dolphin may even show you its latest catch. Welcome to the Tarpon Springs Distillery, housed in the former Stephen Kitsaris Sponge Warehouse. They produce their spirits from scratch right here on the premises. They offer free tours and tastings and have numerous types for you to purchase. They have won a few awards in their short history. So the way you make that spirit, you would fill it up with that match for all those grains, right? But we do an Appalachian style moonshine, which is kind of the base for a lot of our spirits, which means for every pound of grain we put in, we put a pound of sugar. It does not affect the flavor per se, but what it does you get more yield from it again. You actually make more liquor. So we have a copper single pot still. Her name is Amazing Grace. So you will heat it up, you kind of run, you cool it off. So this is a column still. So if you ever seen back in the days on Bugs Bunny, you see him drinking moonshine, the bottles always had three X's on it. What that three X actually meant was it was distilled three times. So we start off with our rye whiskey. 
So the reason we start off with this is this one just won double gold at the San Francisco World's Fair, which means it's one of the top 35 ripe whiskeys in the world. We were hoping to get top three, we, we did not, that would have been outrageous. But to be a little distillery in Florida and win double gold, which means all three of the judges deemed it as gold medal worthy. 107 proof, so it's cast strength. So this one is meant to be placed on a ball of ice, bring it down to 100 proof or so. If you had the best moonshine in America, I have not had because you are. All right. Oh, wow. It actually does. 2021 gold medal award at the American Distillers Institute, which is in Tennessee. So 62% corn. Um, so corn is usually the sweetest of those grains. It's what makes bourbon bourbon. It's because it always has to be at least 51%. It is smooth. Yeah. Tequila finish to you? Yeah. All right. So we use this for margaritas. So when we started, we were making that moonshine. They said you need to have a bourbon. Well, this is not a bourbon. This is actually the moonshine that we have. But we call it oak shine. Um, if you like bourbon, it's going to be very similar. We just don't follow the bourbon law, so it cannot be classified as a bourbon. And they just kept pouring and pouring and pouring. We visit a lot of distilleries and breweries. If you like these too, subscribe to see future videos. In downtown Tarpon Springs is the Two Frog Brewery. The building started as a drugstore when it was built in 1895. Do you remember the Kermit sipping tea memes? I think Two Frogs updated this to the post-2020 times. Five branches of brewing, it's a little uh, three and a half barrel brewery, um, sponge stocks and tarpon swings. We're actually in the process of getting ready to move to downtown tarpon. We just closed up the new building last week. Um, a little bit about us, me and Jerry started. Both of us, uh, I'm retired, Eric, he's uh, about to retire from the Army. I was telling you guys about the medals. We just a month ago, six weeks ago, just won a little beer cup, gold. This young brewery has already outgrown its current building and is moving into a larger one. One taste of their beers and you'll understand why. Discover more travel articles here on our YouTube channel or at fittingandadventure.com.